the biggest thing that we have to remember is that when we have a congruency written right here, congruency is directional. Okay? So when you say A goes to B, A goes to B the same way E goes to F. Does that make sense? So, the second thing that you need to know is that it actually wraps around. So, D goes back to A. See, just like it does up here. Okay? And that's where we're going to start. D goes to A the same way H goes to E. So D goes up 2 to the right 1. H goes up 2 to the right 1 to get to where E is. Then A goes to B the same way E goes to F, so A goes to the right 2, B goes to the, or F goes to the right 2. Then we have our lines. Oops, I don't want to draw that in red. And then, if you notice, if we did it correctly, F should be in a spot where it goes from F to G the same way it goes from F to, from B to C. So B goes left 1, down 2, and F does the same thing to get to G. Right? So, you actually did these last year, uh, but you did them by an equation. Does anybody remember doing them last year? You probably do if I tell you their names. This is called transformations. Okay. All right, so for the time being, we are only going to do them by looking, which is a little bit difficult. Okay? So let me have you do 1A on your own. So this is G, this is H. So here we have HG, CD is the bottom, so this is what your new one should have looked like. EF goes up here. Right? It is a little bit tricky though, because if we just change this to this being EF instead, the whole thing changes, and instead of being the red one that's on top, it's the blue one on the bottom. Does that make sense? So this, we have to pay very, very close attention to where the letters are actually going. Does that make sense? So the letters make all the difference in the world. If F and, if G and H would have been reversed there, then the figure would have been reversed too. Like the point would have been on the bottom, not on the top. Does that make sense? Okay, let's move on. Number two, if you notice, number two actually does something kind of weird. It takes the long side and it actually, the long side is vertical, and instead of the long side being vertical here, the short side is vertical. Uh-oh, what happened to D? Yes, so draw these two. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. So if you notice, same same congruency statement as last time. A, B, C, D is congruent to E, F, G, H. So, what we have here, we go from C to D the same way that we go from G to H. Do you agree with that? So, if you notice here, G is on the bottom, 
right? So we know that's where C would have to be. H is on top, so we know that D would be translated to where H is. So we know that this rectangle is laying on its side then. Which way is it going to go? Is it going to go toward the red dot or is it going to go toward the green dot? How many people say red? How many people say green? Only one? Well, the, you're the only person who's right. Because look, again, it has to go from D to A the same way it goes from H to E. So, if you notice, this is really like it laying on its side that way. So then H would go, H to A would go that way. B would come down right here. Right? So let's change those to what they should be. This is E and this is F. And we go that way. So H, E, F, G. So for this 2A, what I want you to do is the exact opposite. What happens if this was G and this is H? So again, this one is like laying it down to its left. So we get a rectangle that looks like this. E is laying on its side. F is up on top. Does everybody agree? All right. Let's try number three. Number three looks harder than it actually is. I want to start by saying that. Again, remember, E goes to F the same way that A goes to B. So if I have A, one, two, three, down and to the right, one, two, I go one, two, three, down to the right, two. Like this. And I get to F. B goes left one, down one to get to C. So from F to G, I go left one, down one. Then I could, again, I could check to see if I did it right. I go up one, two, three to the left two. I go up one, two, three to the left two. And I see that I was right. So, just because it's on a slant does not mean that it's harder. Okay? Like I said earlier, I gave the other class one that actually has two different answers. The reason why is because if I don't have Z going off right here, um, Z can either go this way or this way and still be correct. Um, but I'm not going to do it. So the first thing that we notice here is that over here I have a pentagon. Over here I just have two, um, just two segments. So the first thing I have to do, I need to complete my pentagon. So I'm going to do that like this. The same way that the other one is completed. Go over two, go down two to the right one. Here you go to the left two and down one. So then we have roughly the same pentagon as we do on the right. Does everybody agree with that? So, the other thing that we have to notice is that we go A, B, C, D, E in a counterclockwise way. But here, X, Y, Z, or Z, X, Y, W, B has to go clockwise. So, I go W, B, Z, Y, X right here on this point. Can't really read that, so let me draw it on the inside. 
So, are these two congruent? Yeah, they are. So you see that all these lines are the same length because they all go two units and then one unit. And then you have this one that is a straight line across a couple um, of, this, of the grids. So are they in the correct order that they need to be in? Yes. It's perfectly okay that as long, see, they're just a mirror reflection of each other, right? So, any questions? Everybody's okay with how to do these? So, I understand they're a little weird, all right? Especially since you don't have an equation to work with. But sometimes you don't get equations. Sometimes you have to just kind of push through it. All right, very good.